you know, it's, it is. It's just wonderful being God's house. And this is God's house. We're two more together in his name. He's here. And this is holy ground. Just because he's here. And back to uh, putting all these programs together, it wasn't all me. Uh, you look at the number of congregations that are involved in this. You look at this group right over here that dedicated their time and came down. And there's... I'm crying. There's two people who really put time in on this. And uh, they're both here. And one of them is Jamie. And uh, Eric has put a lot of time in on it too because he's had to say bye Jamie as she sat down with the computer and stuff and did things. So this is for the two of them together. And you know, all of you out here don't realize this, but as to put this music together, Jamie actually sat down and hand wrote the parts, the harmonies, and everything. So there's lots of time, lots of effort in it. She's put all of her energy into it. And Eric's sitting back here. He's going like, oh no. He has very graciously said, Jamie, go ahead and do it. And he has supported her and encouraged her. He's come down here and worked hard to help set this up. So at this moment, Jamie, if you'll please come forward. And Eric, you've got to come up here too. You're stuck, dude. <laughs> Yes, these are mine. <laughs> <laughs> so on hey, behalf of the Ministerial Association, I want to thank both of you for all of your work, all of your time, all of your energy, and all that you do. Because it's it's an awesome thing. It really is. And thank you for giving me your talents and your time. You're welcome. God bless you. I have a prayer of thanksgiving for us. And so if you would just join me in praying, and that's what we'll do right now. God of all blessings and of all creation, we thank you for the gift of life, for the food of this earth, and for the love of family and friends. We thank you for creation, for the beauty that the eye can see, and for the joy that the ear may hear, and for the expanse of the universe that we cannot understand. We thank you for placing us in this community, for families, for friends, for companions at work, for strangers who welcome us in their midst, for children who lighten our moments with delight, and we thank you for the unborn who offer us hope for the future. And we thank you for this day, for life and one more day to love, for opportunity and one more day to work, for neighbors and one more person to love and to be loved, for your grace and one more experience of your presence, for your promise to be with us and to be our God and to give us salvation. For these and many more blessings, we give you thanks, and we love you. It's in your beautiful Son's name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 <coughs> Following that, in your bulletin that you have, uh, there is a list of responsive readings, and so we will do the first one. That's listed there on the, in the page. I will read the regular print and the congregation will read the capitalized print. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has received from trouble and gathered again. Some wandered in the desert waste, finding no way to a city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached a city to dwell in. Let 
them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to the sons of men. For he satisfies him who is thirsty, and the hungry he fills with good things. Some sat in darkness and in gloom, prisoners in affliction and in irons, for they had no compassion for us. But you Their hearts were bowed down with hard labor. They fell down with none to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness unto them, and broke their bonds under them. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to the sons of men.
Harvey. I am the pastor out of Grace Chapel in Kirby City. I'd like to thank the John Day Ministerial Association for having me again this, this year. It's nice to be back. Last year it was snowing, remember? <laughs> it's not that snowy. The great thing about being a pastor at this time of year is it's almost the time of year dictates what you're going to preach on. Thanksgiving brings back many memories of family gatherings, but the things wasn't the topic. Turkey and pumpkin pie and more turkey and more pumpkin pie. And football games and, and naps was the topic. I used to time my uncle Frank usually within 90 to 110 seconds from the time he swallowed his last piece of turkey to, to the time he hit the couch. <laughs> Thankfulness is fast being replaced by entitlement in culture these days. And why thank anybody for anything if you feel you deserve it, right? The worldly view has always been with us as worldly view has, and it may be in a different light. You know, before I gave my heart to Christ, I felt that I had to thank no one because I worked hard for it. I worked real hard for it. I worked really, really hard for it. So I got it. Whatever it was, a new car, a new house, a bigger business, and the only entity I was ever thankful to was the bank in American Express, because they gave me the money when I needed it, because they thought I was worth it, because I had worth and value in their eyes. But you know, when you come right down to it, the thinking of this world, which I was really good at, I wasn't really grateful to them, because you know what? I deserve that money. Because I worked hard for it, real hard for it, really, really hard for it, and so I was really grateful to myself. Why would God factor into any part of my life if I was just grateful to myself? Where, where does God fit in there? Why would, why would God factor into my life at all since I never really saw him in my childhood? Definitely not. Not a child who was anyone here raised by an alcoholic would, 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 would understand that. Didn't see him in my adolescence, although I did go to the Lutheran church for a bit to meet all the Swedish girls. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> or adult. No wonder Thanksgiving's topics were anything but to be thankful to God for anything. In fact, my idea of Thanksgiving was when all the dysfunctional families of the world get together, for a day and try, mostly unsuccessful if alcohol is being served, not to scream at each other, but kind of like an annual, like an annual Thursday night at the fights. When I Googled what was most important to people, why they were thankful during Thanksgiving, the answers were pretty interesting. An analysis conducted in November 2014 by the Facebook Data Science Team revealed that the three things most Facebook users list as being thankful for during the Thanksgiving season were friends, family, and health. These results came as no surprise to the Facebook analysts who noted that friends are always one of the most important things people are thankful for. They also noticed the trend in people becoming more thankful for health as they got older, a finding that makes sense considering how critical good health is later in life. Life is another thing for which most people say they are thankful. Many realize that they are able to have important experiences, emotions, and relationships just by virtue of living, and that life is something every person who is alive can be grateful for. The other things that most people are thankful for, friends, family, and health, would be non-existent without life itself. Another reason many people find to be thankful for life. Well, you know, it took a science team to figure that out, and it just cracks me up. And many people also listen to music as one of the things for which they are most thankful. People of all ages have reported being thankful for music more than anything else, showing the universal appeal and importance of music in many people's lives. Other answers. Money in the bank, weekends, a partner, pets, holidays and traveling, and waking up every morning. Here's the magazine Real Simples, top 12. Are you ready? Dishwashers. The Gilmore Girls stream on Netflix. Your parents. Parents, number three. Fireplaces. The local farmer's market. The time you get to spend rereading your favorite books. 
roasted pumpkin seeds, pumpkin pie, in all of the fall flavors, sweater weather, Sunday afternoons with a coffee and a good book, big piles of leaves that, you never, that you're never too old to jump in, slow cookers, coffee, coffee, coffee. <laughs> now I printed the top 12 because I, if anybody knows me, agree with number 12. Notice the commonality between all. All the items on the list of thankfulness. Well, hopefully outside of number 12 on the list. So what do you think? I'll give you a hint. It begins with T and it ends with Y. Somebody shout it out. What do you think? Turkey. Turkey is a very appropriate answer for this time of year, but you're wrong. What else? You know, I had to Google what begins with T and ends with Y because I couldn't think of too many things either myself. Temporary. It's all temporary. There's nothing eternal about any of the items on the list. Family, friends, health, temporary. Life, music, temporary. Dishwashers, Gilmore Girls, stream on Netflix, your parents, fireplaces, farmer's market, the time you get to spend rereading your favorite books, roasted pumpkin seeds, Sweater weather, Sunday afternoons with coffee and a good book. Big piles of leaves, slow cookers, and sadly, coffee, coffee, coffee. Mm -hmm. All temporary. Gilmore Girls fans, you know, they would go the way of Mighty Mouse, Donna Reed, or the Adams Family. For those who have never heard of those, those shows, my point is well taken. And those who have, my point is well taken also. <laughs> I gotta tell you a North Carolina story. I moved here from North Carolina, but, but I was born and raised in Massachusetts. So uh, in North Carolina, my wife, Glenda, and I are considered their favorite Yankees. <laughs> Think about it, I still don't know what that means. <laughs> Norman Young, Norman Young. I used to take my card and Norman Young and say, Michael Holly, I got some good news and got some bad news. That's how things would start. He was telling me once that he was really sick. He was so sick, and he decided to stay home on a Saturday. He turned on the TV. He said to his wife, Honey, when did they take Mighty Mouse off the TV? So that's how, how long he had worked on Saturdays. So we bumped out yet here. Here's a pastor saying that everything most people are thankful for is temporary. I hope you are if you do not proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. Why? Why, why am I saying that? Because everything, everything that is important to you, that is near and dear to your heart, is temporary without Jesus. But, if you use today to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, you'll have your eyes open to eternal things. Here's what you can be thankful for, as I am thankful and have been for the past 25 years. He saw it up on the screen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Everlasting life. Does that sound temporary to you? Does it? No. No, it doesn't. 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. 1 Corinthians 15, 55, O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to come cleanse us from all unrighteousness. John 11, 25 and 26, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this, he says. Well, do you believe it? Do you? Because we are here about eternal things. We are here to give thanks to a God that, that is so totally awesome that, that we can't even, we can't even understand forgiveness, can we? Can we? I use an example um, a, a, when I preach sometimes. This poor, poor guy, Chuck Lenhart. I always use him. I don't know why. 
But this is an example I use. Chuck has a two by four, and I'm preaching up there. He's not liking what I'm hearing, or he's not liking what he's hearing. So while I walk by, and he pops me one with that two by four. <laughs> I forgive him. Right? Right? I'm a Christian, I have to forgive him. But am I going to walk by him when I'm preaching again? Am I at least going to check out what he's holding in his hands? Is that really true forgiveness? What we have on God that will forgive us to the point never happened. Just never happened. Luke 24, 46 through 49. Then he said to them, to the apostles he's talking about, the resurrected Christ is talking, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for Christ to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but carry him to the city of Jerusalem until you are endued from the power of high. Do you know what I'm really grateful for? Jesus died for this wretched person. <coughs> this wretched person is speaking to you right now. So when I finally, when I finally saw the ridiculousness of my life without him, when I saw that everything, everything that I believed in, everything that the world offered was not only temporary, but it was false. That when I saw that he had been calling me to him, all my life, that when I finally stood before him a sinner, when I finally had the courage, the courage to break free of the enemy's hold on me, when I finally begged him to enter my heart and be Lord and Savior in my life, you know what? He didn't cross his arms and say, really? Really, Michael? Really, you? After all the sins I've seen you done, after all the jokes you made about me and my children, when you got up just to make money, and when you did make money, you didn't even give my father glory. None of that. He opened his arms and he said, as he says to us in Matthew 11, 28 through 30, he said, come to me, Michael, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest, rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He took me, he took me as I am, and he made me a new creation, and he will take you as you are too. He will give you his eyes and his heart, his love, his rest, his grace, his spirit, and you too will become a new creation. Do you know his spirit will live and actually dwell in you? Absolutely new. We will be absolutely new. We are absolutely new. No sin not forgiven. Never happened. Gone. No reason. Now listen up. No reason to carry guilt with you. If you proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your heart, don't look in your rearview mirror. You ain't going that way anyway. Right? You've got to leave the guilt right in some suitcase Drop it off at a UPS station and let her go. Yes, that's right. Because we are forgiven. Right. The thing that Christians forget most is how forgiven we are. How, how Jesus wants to just make us into this new creation. And he will guide you into his eternity. You will become a new creature. Lovely and beautiful in his eyes. You will be a child of a heavenly father. Not an earthly father. But a heavenly father who is described in 103. Y'all ready to hear this? Praise the Lord my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. Now listen up. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. And as far as the east is from the west, how far is that? How far is the east from the west? It's, 
It's infinite. So far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower in the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone. And its place is remembered no more. From everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness, with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Amen. You want a father like that? Amen. I wanted a father like that. I have a father like that now. You know, C.S. Lewis is one of my favorite authors. And he, he, he is talking through Jesus' perspective. Jesus talking to us in, in this paragraph. This is out of his book, Mere Christianity. Give me all of you. I don't want so much of your time, so much of your talents and money, and so much of your work. I want you, all of you, I have not come to torment or frustrate the natural man or woman, but to kill it. No half measures will do. I don't want to only prune a branch here and a branch there. Rather, I want the whole tree out. Hand it over to me. The whole outfit. All of your desires. All of your wants and wishes and dreams. Turn them all over to me. Give yourself to me and I will make of you a new self. In my image. Give me yourself. In exchange, I will give you myself. My will shall become your will. My heart shall become your heart. So, is today the day? Are there husbands and wives out there that have been dragged here by the husband and wife that's unequally yoked to you? Have you been going to church all your life and you can't do this and have Jesus right beside you? Are you still trying to do it yourself? Are you still trying to take care of number one? Are you still saying, no, 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 God, I got this. I got to tell you something. You got nothing. You have absolutely nothing. What we need to do this evening, why, why do we all get here? Why do we mingle our congregations together? Is to hear the truth and to hear the word. The word of truth. And the word of truth would be uh, preached by Pastor Bob tonight. We sing the word of truth, but we have to live it too. Tonight is the night. If you have any doubt, You know, I'm a hospice chaplain for home health and hospice. And there are two types of people I call on near the end of their lives. One knows where they're going. One is not sure. One has hope. One has no hope. What's it with you tonight? Is tonight the night you need to come forward and give your heart to Jesus Christ? Let's pray for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your truth. We thank you, Lord, for your total awesome love for us. We thank you for the Son, Jesus. We thank you for the new creation you want us to be, Lord. Lord, give us strength and courage, Lord. I lift those up tonight that are really maybe not sure of you, maybe not sure of even why they're here tonight, Heavenly Father. I ask them, Lord, I, I, I just ask the Holy Spirit to finally vanquish that enemy that's holding them back from calling your Son, Lord and Savior, and becoming your creation. We thank you and we love you for Jesus Christ. Amen. The second reading for this evening is from Psalms 145, verses 8, 9, and 13 through 21. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all, he is compassion on all he has made. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving toward all he has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. 
The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving toward all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Amen. Well, good evening. My name is uh, Pastor Lee Tate from Prairie City, Sons of God, and we're just delighted to be with you tonight as well. We're going to receive an offer tonight um, that will go for our ministerial association, both here in John Day as well as Prairie City. And uh, I just want to thank you ahead of time as you give. Um, one other thing that I want to share, because you guys give so much in all of our churches, uh, how many of you had a chance to be involved with our Christmas Child, Operation Christmas Child boxes this year? Um, I want to give a total of that just so you guys can hear the good things that we've done as a county. We've been involved. Uh, we had a total of 1,017 Christmas Child boxes this year. Can we give the Lord a hand? We had churches involved from a Spray, I think, joined us, Unity joined us, and, uh, you know, Monument, all the churches in between. So uh, just thank you for being a part of that, the churches that are involved in blessing Operation Christmas Child. Our ministerial association uh, helps many people in our community, both here in John Day and Prairie City, and just uh, some ballpark figures. And John Day, they probably had a chance to help 30 to 40 different people and families. And in Prairie City, 20 to 25 different families. And that's kind of, could be a very conservative, but we just want to thank you for giving it. So I have some gentlemen that I've asked if you'd come and, and uh, there's some baskets there. We're going to get ready to receive. If you could do this tonight. Um, and Al, I never ask you if they write a check and you just write it to the Ministerial Association. Okay. If you're writing a check tonight, just make it out to, to the John Day Ministerial Association. I'll get to both. But I want us to pray. And, and uh, I want to thank each one that has been a part of the service and each pastor that's led in prayer and spoke. I'm thankful for you guys speaking because that way my kids didn't have to put up with me preaching again. So uh, PKs, you know, they get to put up with their dad preaching every Sunday. But I've heard a theme tonight that God loves us so much and that we have so much to be thankful for for our salvation, for the gifts that God gives us. And as we give tonight, would you think about that and say, God, I want to just thank you for all that you've given me and I want to give forward to help our community tonight. Would you pray with me? Lord, we have so much to be thankful for. And as Pastor Mike is here, and Pastor Levi, others in the readings, and everything we've done tonight in our worship, Lord, our salvation is so, such a gift from you, God, and we praise you for our salvation tonight. We want to give back to you. I pray for this offering, that you would bless each gift and giver, Lord, as it goes towards our ministerial association, as churches we raise out together and say, Lord, we're going to reach a community for the love of Jesus. And tonight, would you just bless this offering, bless each one that gives, those that may be struggling themselves as they give in faith. I pray that their situation would change and they would see you rule in their life. We love you and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me ask you to do this. As that a basket goes down your row, uh, would you just kind of pass it back on this side? Maybe we can get uh, one more guy up on this side to help if there's someone that would like to just at the end of the row. There we go. Thank you, Shane. And uh, again, just thank you from the bottom of my heart tonight and uh, each church that's here. Lord bless you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being a part of this. Jamie pushed our voices far enough in all the practices and all the singing. She kept pulling out more, pull more, more, more. I'm not sure how much voice I've got left. 
but I'm thankful to be here. I came to this community in January on the 10th. And you have, as a community, blessed my heart. This has been a joyful place to serve you. Judy and I say thank you. Pastor Mike, you touched my heart. You moved my spirit. You preached my sermon. <laughs> Sad part of it is he did it better than I was going to do. But there are a few words I'd like to share. Because what Mike was telling you is it's not about what you have. We have been so richly blessed. This year, I mean, I, I look at the gardens that people have shared things out of their gardens, the abundance that's come this year. It's been a bumper crop. I, I drive through the countryside, I see the hay barns just packed full. I mean, we have had a good year. Amen. We've had no disasters, no fires this year. Hallelujah. Nothing to recover from. It's been a good year. But we have to do a gut check together as a body of believers. Are we just thanking God because it's been a tremendous year and we have a little more in our cupboards and closets? Or because we have grown in our dependence upon Him? the giver of all of our blessings. When Mike was sharing, and I am absolutely sincere, I, I know what he was talking about, and I, I want to just build on it for a second. The 16th chapter of Luke, Jesus tells a story while he's in Jerusalem. It's of two men. One, you would say, was blessed beyond anything anybody could imagine. He had wealth. He had a good home. He had family. He had his health. He had robes of fine purple. He ate in luxury. Everybody would say, that's a man God loves. There's a man who was blessed by God. There's a godly man. And then there was that poor sucker that was sitting out in the street. They gave him the name of Lazarus. What a sorry, miserable existence he lived. Completely void of anything of God's love. What a miserable place. Even the dogs came and licked his sword. Jesus was telling that story in Jerusalem. And as he looked out over the valley that separated the Mount of Olives from the Mount Zion, he said there was a moment then when the rich man died. And they had this massive funeral with people screaming their anguish of heart as they proceeded down through the valley of Kidron and, and up onto the Mount of Olives where the tombs were located for all the wealthy and important people in the whole entire history of Israel. And they took him high, high, high up on the mountain, clear at the very top of the Mount of Olives where the biggest and most expensive tombs were. And they opened the tomb of his ancestors as it was their custom. And they slowly, gently pushed the bones of the previous occupant of that box off to the side and they laid the body of the rich man in that tomb and put the lid over top of it. And then each person who'd come to visit took a stone and put upon the top of that as a remembrance that the fact they were there, they remembered, they, they treasured the relationship they had with that man. And as it happened, Lazarus, the poor, sick, miserable man, also died.
And the cart came through in the morning, as it did every morning just after dawn. And two, three men who were the most miserable men in the whole society, they were despicable people and unclean in every way, but their job was to go through the streets and pick up the trash. And they loaded his dead carcass up on the wagon where they put things like the cow manure and the donkey droppings and the trash from the street. And they carried his body down on the wagon, down through the city with no fanfare or grief, down through the thing they called the dung gate, appropriately named, and out into a precipice called the Valley of Gehenna. And it was the garbage dump for Jerusalem. And off the wagon, they threw the trash, they threw the garbage, they threw the manure, they threw the junk from the street. And then down at the bottom of the wagon was the body of the poor man Lazarus. And they picked up this stinking rotten carcass and pitched it over the side of the precipice and down into the miserable cauldron of Gehenna. And nobody cried. Nobody wept. Nobody mourned. And his body was going to be consumed in that lingering fire that just burned up everything that was consumable down in through there. And then Jesus turned the storm upside down. In eternity, the men woke. And to their surprise and utter horror, their positions had been reversed. And the poor man, who had never felt the blessing of God, found himself lying in the very arms of his father, Abraham. Loved, treasured, a member of the family, taken care of and wrapped up in the love of all of Israel. And the rich man awoke in Gehenna. And he cried out to Abraham and he said, could you please send somebody just to put a drop of water on my tongue to slow down the process of that decay and consuming fire that was slowly going to dissolve him down to nothing. And Abraham said, no, can't do. Can't do. You had your blessings in this life. And Lazarus had nothing. In God's justice, this is the way it's going to be. Mike, you were right. It's all temporary. Just temporary. But what we decide to do with Jesus Christ is forever. Amen. There's nobody going to rescue us out of that pit. There is no one who can say, I'll help you. I'll make the pain less. I'll make it go away. I'll help you just a little bit. Not even to send someone and warn your brother so that they won't follow you into the pit. <clears throat> was he a bad man? No, it doesn't say there's a single thing that he did that was wrong. He's not charged with any crime. But he didn't know God. He didn't know the love of God. He didn't know that life has more to it than just having a good time and a big screen TV and a car with heated seats in the wintertime. <laughs> It's 
It's all temporary. <laughs> but what we decide to do with Jesus as the very personification, the complete package of God's plan of salvation and grace, what we do with him lasts forever. I want you to stop and think about that because it's easy to give thanks when everything's cool and we're healthy and we're good. But check your heart. Where do you stand with Jesus Christ? Where do you stand on that forever decision? Where do you stand do you love him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength? Does he really get you charged up in the morning to get out there and do the work he has laid out for you to do? Are you in love with doing the work of God's kingdom? Do you pray and ask God to open your eyes to show you the beggar's that need that extra touch of love? Are you looking for those opportunities to put the crumb of bread in someone's hand who hasn't had anything before? Are you looking for a place to apply God's grace to a sinner who has nothing like grace coming, who doesn't deserve it? Are you the one who's going to be the one who put your arm around one who's all but given up and say, come on, let's walk for a while together. I'll walk with you. Are you on fire to see the world change a little bit better? Because God's grace is pouring out through us. That Abraham and all of the family of God can welcome you and say, come on home, you good and faithful servant. You did good. You did great. You did exactly what I wanted you to do. Come and share in the bounty of all eternity. Don't be surprised unpleasantly heartbrokenly surprised that deciding the wrong things are important. Listen to the Spirit of God calling to your hearts. Becky, would you share with us the reading you have prepared?
Would you stand? We're going to have a song here to close. We have in the Ministerial Association been praying for this evening, been praying for you, been praying for this service. And here's the prayer we've been praying together. Lord, don't let anybody walk out of this building who your spirit brought in here to worship with doubts or questions about what's going on in your heart or your relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't walk out of here with unanswered questions or problems. If there's something standing between you and that passion to live for Jesus, come and talk to one of us. You saw us up here this, this evening. You saw the ones who were here. These are the ones praying for you. Praying for this service. We want God's spirit to break out on this community and just turn the sky red Amen. with the joy of God's presence and power. Amen. Be a part of it. Come and be a part of the kingdom work that God wants for you would you sing I Surrender All with us, please?
people to follow him. He simply asked. There's no extra points for dragging things out, making somebody do something that they're reluctant to do. What I want you to know is these people that you've seen up here tonight love you. They love you with all their heart. They are investing their lives in you. They are doing what can, they can do to take care of you. And they're asking God's presence upon you. Listen to God's Spirit speaking through them. Listen to what you heard God talk to you in your heart tonight. Take one of these people aside if you have that need inside of you and say, look, you and I, we got to talk. We got to get some things straight. But always know you are loved. Always know that we're praying for you. Always know that God wants you in His family. And with that, we're going to sing our closing hymn.